Um, I said earlier, we're gonna to touch on that section control side of things. So if we click on section control, we've got several different features under here. Um, section control master, um, if the box is dark colored, that means it, that's the active side. So right now our section control is turned off. We have no light that's green down here on the corn operation. We click it, dark side's on on, that means our section control is active. Um, across the top, we made that headland boundary. So if you do want your section control to turn on and off with the headland associated with that field, you would turn it on. Um, right hand side, if you wanted it to ignore uh, or utilize those interior exterior boundaries, you can check mark those and make those changes from um, this side. So this is what we were talking about earlier this morning. So if you have the exterior boundary that you're not sure if it's right, that one pass around the field, just uncheck exterior, it's gonna plant outside of that boundary, as long as you have an out of boundary rate on your prescription if you're using prescriptions. Next will be the overlap settings. So click on that, that would be your seed placement versus your exterior interior boundary. Um, so if we wanted it to shut off at the row, we'd click to that 100% overlap and then choose plant to row and that's gonna shut off right where that seed's planted at for your end rows. Um, you can do a, you can make it skip or overlap depending upon how many inches you wanna have extra or less coverage. So if we wanted it to overlap by 10 inches past that first row, um, you could. Same with skip. If you wanted it to plant short and be a true row space between, um, you could put it at that 15 inches so that you have that true, true spacing between that headland row. Um, so plant to row is typically what we see so that it shuts off right when it gets to that headland. Um, interior and exterior overlap, depending upon what you're doing, um, adjust those accordingly. Um, same setup there, if you want it to shut off right at plant to row, it'll do the same, same kind of deal there. So click save. Um, probably the biggest feature, or my, one of my favorites on these displays is that performance tuning for the section control side of things. So taking the guesswork out of me calling Chris saying, hey Chris, my anhydrous bar is turning on too late. Do I need to go up or down with that uh, section control time? So gives you an overview of what you're seeing. I think everybody in this room knows what a skip or an overlap is. So um, we can click next on this page. So define what your issue is first. So as we're coming into a planted area, so as we're coming into that headland, we're having a skip at four and a half mile an hour for uh, 10 inches. And then as we're coming out of the planted area, we're turning on too soon, I'll say. We have a overlap of 12 inches at five mile an hour. Um, so the big thing with section control, um, it is distance and speed based to figure out where it needs to turn on and off at. So your times are based off of the speed um, that you're going in and out of your coverage area. So we wanna be consistent going in and out, otherwise you're gonna see poor performance, I'll say, if you're not um, consistently going in and out of your coverage at the same speed. Um, hit next. Um, same kind of deal we saw before, if we wanted it to shut off the row, at the row, we're gonna choose plant to row and click okay. And then it updated those mechanical delay times we saw under our setup. So we'd go to view details and that's gonna actually show you what the changes were made. So it took it from a 0.3 to a 0.16 and a 0.17. If you got an error message here that said, hey, we can't make those adjustments, more than likely your measurements are off for that planner or your receiver. So go back, double check the measurements and then come back and do it again. Um, Dallin, how many acres should we plant before we check our section control? Couple quarters, yeah. <laughs> no, we don't wanna get the call after a couple quarters. I wanna see maybe a pass and a half. Go back over the hill somewhere. I just need you to make enough of a pass that you can go in and out. We check our times, measure our distances, turn around and come back through. Um, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do that. And especially with this performance tuning, we can get it dialed in pretty good really quick and take a lot of the guesswork out of trying to figure out, well, how many, how many feet did I travel at five mile an hour versus four and a half? What, what adjustments do I need to make to that time? So um, that performance tuning, it's been a big, big help here in the last couple of years. So utilize it. If you got questions on how to use it or want one of us to come out, we're more than happy to come out and help you guys um, get your planners dialed in before 
those two or three quarters are planted. So the next thing to touch on here um, at the bottom, our work monitor would be more of your counters base totals. So um, if you wanted say lifetime, you set your counter, you never hit reset, it's gonna count up from there. Um, you can run multiple counters for different functions. Um, more often than not, what I'm utilizing, I'm going back, if we hit X and then to menu, I'm using the work total side of things because that's, that's a field specific total based off the operation and your variety. So it's gonna be more specific to that operation, um, whereas that counter, if you didn't get it started right away or you reset it at the wrong point, um, it's not gonna give you the information you're looking for. So um, as with anything on these display, garbage data in equals garbage data out. So that's why you wanna take the time to get everything cleaned up and on operation center so that you've got your varieties to choose from. So it is documenting that data that you guys can utilize to look at those maps at the end of the season. Um, so next thing, if we go back up to layout manager, compared to um, a uh, 2600 or 2630, we have the ability to do a lot more run pages and have a lot more freedom on here. Um, can anybody tell me how many run pages we could do on the previous versions of displays? Five, what do we have to do to select them to get them to our home page? Check mark. Had to check mark that page, select it, so you had five pages. Maybe we had three for the planner, two for the sprayer, or, or two for the rate controller. Um, then it comes to harvest, you had to change and reassign those. Um, with our Gen 4s and 5s, we have what's called a run page set. So think of it as a folder. We can make those run pages ahead of time, put them in that folder. So if you're taking this Gen 5 from a tractor or in a planner to a sprayer, to a combine, to a tillage machine, um, you can have different run pages so you aren't having to reinvent those or reassign each of those run pages. Um, so to do that, we would need to go to all run pages at the bottom and then click create new run page and then click, you have to label it there at the top. So we're gonna do map slash uh, seating or whatever we've got associated with this one. Map and totals and click OK, and then click add module down at the bottom left. So choose your feature you're looking for. So we wanna add mapping, so we're gonna click on that. Um, as you see here in kind of the middle, you have different shapes for different icons across the page. Um, so no longer are we just tied to those five different colored boxes. Um, uh, we got lots of different icons that you can utilize. Go ahead and go down one, Chris. Um, so we're gonna click on that map module we want and click add. Um, click add module. You can put as much on there as you want or as little. Go to your ISO bus VT and let's grab a planner half screen. Um, so under ISO bus, if you're running an older piece of equipment, um, you have to navigate through there until you find, um, say that planner controller, add that to the run page, click add modules. If we wanna add our totals, we're gonna to go down to our work totals. We've got several different sizes. Um, a lot of times I'm using that uh, longer tab. And then if we wanted say uh, fields and boundaries and then shift tracks, um, we can add that information in there too. So a lot more customizable than what we saw in our previous versions. Um, if something's not gonna fit, it's gonna give us a red X up there, not allow it to go to your run page. Um, Red X there shows that we're filled up. Um, so once you get everything laid out the way you want, you can click save. But so we save that run page, but it's not in our active set. So we have to do that check mark type feature. So we've got to come back up to our run page sets and hit create new set. You got to label that run page. So we're going to call this plant. You have to do a shortcut bar which we'll, we'll go through how to edit a shortcut bar here in a second or two. Click OK, and then you have to include those additional run pages. So I want a guidance one, and then I want my uh, map and totals page we just made, and then click Save. And then we still have to change that active set. So right now we're still stuck on that default. Um, so we don't see that mapping and totals page we just made. So if we click back up top here in the green, <coughs> 
check, click on active set, and then click on plant, and then okay. And then we're now, now have those two run pages we selected. So um, you can go through, make all the run pages you need. Once you get them set, we can take those and copy them from machine to machine. Um, so hopefully makes, makes that startup of a new machine go a little bit quicker and easier. Um, if we go back to layout manager, shortcut bars, um, one thing I know that we always had to add on a Gen 4 usually was that uh, section control icon. On our uh, Gen 5s where we have more space down here at the bottom, it does come with that section control icon um, already populated. Um, let's see if there's any difference on this one. I don't think headland shortcut is something you can get to. Yeah, same, same on our Gen 5, so no headland shortcut yet. So not to say it's there or not, or not gonna be there. Um, very well could be. Add that to the feedback if that's something you guys wanna see on the display. Um, under that question mark under operation center, um, click that question mark down at the bottom, feedback, give an actual use case scenario. Well, it'd be nice to have a headland shortcut on there to be able to toggle that on and off without having to push five button pushes. Don't say, well, you guys came out with a piece of junk display. Why didn't you give this feature? Um, at a real world case, it'll elevate that up the list a little bit further than the guys that are just swearing and tearing at it. Not exactly there, but you could do this shortcut to just section control. And that would take you to this page where you can just toggle it on and off. I mean, it very well could be something that they're working on, but they haven't told us any indication of that yet. What else do we need to cover on displays, Chris? Has anybody ever used that quick line option down here across the bottom? Yeah, so quick line works pretty good if you're just doing tillage or something. Um, quick line, you don't have to name it, you don't save it, but it will disappear as soon as you switch, turn the machine off, switch fields, whatever, that will go away.